What up, cucks? It's your boy, The Hater, and it's time for yet another episode of Hater Outdoors, motherfuckers. Hater Outdoors, you know it, you love it, you can't get enough of it, cucks. Now, today's video is a special request, and I'm still parsing through the requests, so some of you may feel like you haven't been heard yet, but I'm sure your video will come down soon. But for today, we're doing 25 reasons why women's wrestling sucks. Here we go with the controversials. Reason number one, the wrestling is inferior, all right? Let's not get it twisted. You can look at basically any women's match and it's full of botches. This is not because women are inherently worse wrestlers than men. It's because women are newer at serious wrestling than men. And as a result, they haven't needed to hone their craft as much, right? Back in the day, you could get by with just being a pretty girl with minimal wrestling skill. And that was enough. And that trend has continued, right? They don't ever hire anyone who's a complete pig. So there you have it. Uh, reason number two, the promo skills are inferior motherfucks. And that is when they cut promos because they seldom do, right? You oftentimes just see women coming out there and never cutting a promo, uh, which is gonna come into play later in another reason. Reason number three, they try their hardest to mimic the men. It's a personal favorite of the haters. The, the reality is that the women's division, and I don't just mean in WWE, but I mean generally, it needs an identity. The identity cannot simply be anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. That's silly, you know what I mean? Reason number four, there are no natural stars. They don't even try, I, I don't think, to hire women that could be stars, right? That's never been a consideration. No one's ever thought, wait a second, what if our main star is a woman? No one's ever thought that. You can make an argument for TNA when they push Tessa Blanchard, but obviously that was a one-off and obviously that didn't, you know, pay out, right? Reason number five, the gender parity is forced. Nobody actually believes that women's wrestling will ever draw as much as, let's say, The Undertaker, Playa, or The Rock. Nobody believes that, but they want you to feel that way, right? They want you to feel like, oh, it's, everything's equal. You know, like, a great example of this would be like, uh, you know, if you look at FIFA or even WWE 2K, right? If you look at FIFA, it's like the top three players in the last FIFA game, I think, are uh, Erling Haaland, uh, De Bruyne, and Mbappe, right? And they're, they're all rated at 94 when the game was released. And then they have, like, Aitana Bomanti or whatever, who's a woman, and she's also rated at 94. You know what I mean? So it's like, they can't accept the fact that, like, she doesn't have the same pace or shooting ability as Erling Haaland, right? Like, in reality, she'd be rated like a 52. But you see what I'm saying? Like, they want to create parity, right? They want you, they want to condition you into thinking that this is just as good as that. But they failed completely, right? Because nobody cares about women's soccer and nobody cares about women's wrestling. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that, like, women shouldn't be allowed to wrestle or any other misogynist crap. I'm talking strictly from a facts-based perspective. And the facts are what the facts are. It's not because women are worse than men. Absolutely not. It's the same philosophy that I have with UFC, right? If you take like Erling Haaland or let's take someone that everybody knows, Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo, right? If you take these guys, chances are that almost everyone listening to this video has at one point or another fantasized about being the best soccer player of all time and fantasized about being the man who brings the World Cup home, right? Almost everyone has fantasized that. Chances are, most people have never fantasized about being UFC champion because they don't give a shit, right? So the funnel is different, right? Where there are billions of men that want to be Messi, and there can only be one, there's like 30,000 men that want to be John Jones, and there can only be one. It's still impressive, right? But that's the idea. If you look at Caitlin Clark's contract, right? She gets like $73,000, you know? There's women out there who are probably better at basketball than Caitlin Clark, but who are also smart or who are very attractive. And they, and they might think, wait a second, I can make that in like one week modeling or in, you know, two months being like a highly paid surgeon or attorney or something, right? So that's the problem. The problem is the funnel behind it. There's no money in being a women's wrestler. So as a result, you're not going to attract the best athletes that you can find, right? Because most people that are of that level have other capabilities, right? So let's say you need someone who's athletic and is an actress, right? 
let's say you find like, I don't know, let's say Charlize Theron, right? She can make 20 million doing a movie or she can make like 400K a year if she's lucky getting her ass whooped in WWE. You see what I'm saying? But for the men, it's different because the men have big money contracts uh, typically. This is changing, but it's not there yet. And the gen gender parity is forced, right? It doesn't matter if you take Aitana Bomanti and give her a 94 on FIFA, right? Like her entire like career earnings are probably made in like one day by Cristiano Ronaldo if he just goes on Instagram, you know what I mean? So there's a difference here. And that's an important consideration to take uh, into account, that is. Reason number seven, there are too many women, right? And when there are too many women, it doesn't make any sense. And I, I just realized I missed reason number six, so here we go. Some of the parody makes no sense, like war games, right? Certain things, there must be parody, right? So for example, if there's a men's champion, there needs to be a women's champion. If there's a men's World Cup, there should be a women's World Cup, right? But because there's a men's Hell in a Cell, doesn't mean there should be a women's Hell in a Cell. For the same reason that just because there's a women's bikini contest, doesn't mean there should be a men's bikini contest. You know, I had this conversation with my fiance and I was telling her, I was like, look, women athletes get paid less because they draw less money. And I was like, it's the same thing if you take like Giselle, right? She's like the highest paid model of all time, basically, right? And there's male models that make like one one thousandth of what she makes, right? And I was like, and that's just how it is. And that's how it's going to be because nobody wants to see like a very attractive guy. I mean, just some people do and most people will pay for that. But the vast majority of people that are looking for attractiveness are horny men. And they'd rather see Giselle than some jobber, like than some like Dolph Ziggler type or Cody Rhodes. You know what I'm saying? There's no money in that. That's why these people do other things, right? Like Cody Rhodes could have been an underwear model. We always joke about how he looks like one, right? But there's, there's no money in it. So he's like, oh, I think I'll go take a chair to the head instead. And maybe I'll make some more money. You see what I'm saying, right? Giselle, on the other hand, maybe she could have been the best wrestler of all time. But she's like, oh, do I want to do this for 400K? Or how about I wear this dress and get 2 million? You know, that's the logic behind it. Some of the parody doesn't make sense. And the example that I can give is everything I just gave, but War Games is a great example. And as I said, reason number seven, there are too many women. Reason number eight, and this is probably my favorite reason. Basically, every woman becomes champion, which devalues the championship. Right? It's the same thing with men nowadays, because nowadays everyone becomes like intercontinental champion and a lot of people become world champion, right? If you look back in the day, winning the intercontinental title was prestigious because few people were able to do it, right? So you had, you had your card, right? You had your like standard intercontinental champions, like in the Attitude Era. You had, it was basically Benoit, Jericho, and sometimes Kurt Angle, but he quickly moved to the main event. But it was Benoit and Jericho. That was basically it. Those were your intercontinental champions, right? But here and there, you'd get like a Val Venus run. You'd get a Rikishi run. You know what I mean? You might even get back in the day, a little few years before, a Road Dog run, right? But these were uh, few and far uh, in between. The idea was that this title is prestigious. So we're not gonna give it to Steve Blackman. We're not gonna give it to Al Snow. We're gonna give it to William Regal one time. You see what I'm saying? Or two times, because he won it one, uh, second time, I think, in like 2006. But things had changed by that time. But nowadays, it's like Kofi Kingston it's like a 10-time Intercontinental Champion. Kofi Kingston is not a better wrestler than Val Venus or William Regal. I think we could all agree. So there you have it, right? Um, it's the same thing with women's wrestling, but it's even worse. Because every woman becomes women's champion. And now that they have all the other titles, every woman is going to win something. Hell, even Zelina Vega, who might be the lowest level uh, of a female wrestler in WWE presently, right? Even she won the Queen of the Ring. You know, even Carmella, who was basically a jobber forever, she won the first money in the bank. So every woman has some sort of accolade, if not the world championship. So none of these things mean anything. You know what I mean? Like now they're saying, they're like, who's going to be the next money in the bank for the women? People are saying Chelsea Green, who has won like two matches her entire career and is on TV like once every seven weeks. But now they want to push her so that she gets a push. And that brings me to other reasons, but we're going to get there later. Reason number nine, there are almost never any storylines. When was the last time there was a storyline that involved women? Well, the only example I can think of is the, if you even want to count it, is this Rhea Ripley storyline that also involves Liv Morgan. But I can't really consider this a storyline because Rhea Ripley's not around. This is just Liv Morgan doing some great character work, right? The other time I can think of is when Stephanie McMahon wrestled against Ronda Rousey and when the Bella Twins had a feud. Beyond that, Right? You have to go back to like 2002 
to look at like Trish Stratus and Victoria, Mickey James's debut, things of that nature. I almost stepped on a hole and died, motherfucks. Um, so there you have it, right? That's the problem. There's no storylines. Like if you look at, for example, this, like, I mean, you know, of course, of course they'll be like, oh, Bailey won the Royal Rumble. What's the reason she's going to like wrestle, um, not Asuka, but the other one, e Io Sky? Well, the reason is they don't like each other. Yeah, that happens all the time. They were part of the same group. Now they don't like each other. So what? That's not enough. Obviously, when two people are fighting, they don't like each other. But what's the storyline, motherfucks? Now, I will concede that this is not a problem unique to women's wrestling. But men's wrestling does have the occasional storyline, right? Men's wrestling does have the occasional, even, even low-level storyline. Like, for example, uh, Braun Breaker is just whooping ass. And he has to take Ricochet out because he's a thorn in his side, right? You don't see that with women's storylines. Let alone do you see anything like the bloodline with women, right? Uh, which was not, and I, I will maintain that the bloodline is an overrated storyline, but it nevertheless is a storyline. Uh, reason number 10, there are virtually no gimmicks in the women's division, right? Nobody has a gimmick. Like, there's these implied gimmicks sometimes, right? So, for example, like Rhea Ripley's like a darker-than-thou character, right? Obviously, damage control, the three Japanese girls are Japanese, and that becomes their gimmick. But that's not a good gimmick, number one. And even if you count them as gimmicks, nobody else has any gimmicks. Like, what's Bianca Belair's gimmick? Right? And how is it different from Jade Cargill's and Tiffany Stratton's gimmick? It's not different. Right? What's Zelina Vega's gimmick? You know, she hangs out with Latinos. It's not a gimmick. Right? What's her gimmick, motherfucker? Give her a gimmick. Make her like a, a sassy Puerto Rican. I don't know. Figure something out. Make it interesting. Back in the day, women had gimmicks. Right? Women had legitimate gimmicks. Like, I'll give you a great example. Zelina Vega herself in TNA. She was uh, Rosita, right? And she was like the cousin of Sarita. And they were part of Mexican America, right? Which was a shit group, but it doesn't matter. The point is Mexican America had an identity, right? And Rosita and Sarita, even though Sarita was like a white Canadian, right? They were portrayed as these like sassy Latinas, right? Almost like, like in a way, like hood chicks, like the kind of girls that hang out with cholos. You know what I mean? And they were like vicious they were tough you know they had all these characteristics right you had like fucking obviously awesome kong is a great example um you ha you've had like raisha saeed remember her raisha saeed she was her gimmick was she was like a muslim woman you've had like ariel who was a vampire daphne one of my personal favorites there's a lot of women that have had gimmicks but nowadays it's a lost art and nobody ever does it reason or even lana you can go not even that far back reason number 11 all the women dress the same right Last night I was watching Raw and, uh, what's her name? Not Io Sky, not Asuka, but the other one. Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane comes out and she still has the pirate eye patch because now she's like reverting back to that it looks like. And basically beyond that she just wears a robe and has a lot of fluttery like tassels and shit off of her robe. This is the same costume that nearly every wrestler wears, right? A bunch of tassels and shit and multicolors. It never looks the same. Uh, any other time. Reason number 12. Wigs and extensions, right? In my opinion, this is the worst thing to happen to wrestling and to women in a long time, right? The fact that women don't have to even have their own hair anymore is preposterous because that's one of the things that makes a woman attractive. So if your hair changes every week, and then I realize you're wearing a wig and I'm like, oh, what do you look like under the wig? You're probably bald or some shit, right? And that's not sexy. Hair extensions, same thing. It's like, just, just have the hair you have. You know what I mean? As Hamlet put it, God giveth thou a face and thou painteth another. Except in this case, we're talking about hair, cucks. Reason number 13. People always include uh, a woman in their top fives because they are smarks or marks, right? The idea is that when you say top five, you're like, oh, wait. I gotta include a woman so people think I'm cool or so people don't think I'm sexist, right? It's the same thing when people are like, oh, well, top five, I gotta include like one black wrestler, one woman, and one Asian, right? It's like stupid shit like that, you know? And women are to blame for this, not women obviously, but women in wrestling are to blame for this because they've pushed for this manufactured equality that wouldn't otherwise exist. Reason number 14, if women wrestled in a separate show, nobody would watch. Let's be honest, right? If they had like the 205 live version of a woman's show, it would be the lowest rated show of all time. 
nobody would care because people like me would be like, finally, I can watch Raw without seeing women ruin everything in the flow of, a, of an episode, right? It's like the amount of women's matches we have nowadays is preposterous and they're not fun and the women are interchangeable, so I just skip forward. And before you know it, half of Raw is done. Reason number 15, and this is why I made this video. The WWE and other promotions use guilt uh, to control the fans and manipulate them into caring. The fact of the matter is, nobody gives a shit. Nobody really believes that Charlotte is great in the ring. Charlotte is not better than Arya Davari in the ring. Charlotte is not better than Mustafa Ali in the ring. It's not even close, motherfucks. The things that Ricochet can do, Charlotte will never be able to do, right? And I might even say no woman will be able to do that shit, right? But we have to pretend that Charlotte is this great talent, right? And Charlotte's probably the best one they got. You see what I'm saying? You see like Asuka, are you kidding me? People are like, Asuka's the female Daniel Bryan. Oh, so she's a female jobber? You know, absolutely not good enough. You know what I'm saying? There are a few exceptions. Awesome Kong, in my opinion, perfect in the ring, right? There's a Gil Kim, amazing. There's a few exceptions. However, the, the, the truth is that people are guilted into caring, right? They put guilt on you. Like my friend one time told me, he said, hater, they're thinking about doing intergender matches in WWE. I said, that's a horrible idea. He said, hater, well, don't you think it'd be a good match? I'm like, what? He's like, Roman Reigns versus Charlotte. He's like, I think that could be amazing. And I was like, have you fucking lost your mind? Like, there's no universe in which Charlotte has any chance in beating Roman Reigns. This is just pathetic at this point. You can get by with Charlotte versus like Finn Balor or JD McDonough or Carmelo Hayes even, right? These small dudes, you can get by with that. But you're not, it's not gonna work if the guy is over 5'6", you know? It's not gonna work, cucks. Oh, Finn Balor's 5'10". I'll believe it when I see it, motherfucks. I'll believe it when I see it. Carmelo Hayes, I think we've already exposed that he's like 5'6", because someone, I read somewhere, someone was like, I'm 5'8", legit, and he was like two or three inches shorter than me, so, you know, there you have it. But the point is, they guilt fans into caring. Now, reason 16, because they guilt fans into, into caring, the product then sucks, right? If the care that the fans display is fake and manufactured, then you don't have to try hard. It's really that simple, right? It is one of the most basic economic principles of all time. The idea is as follows. If you need to succeed and you don't get a leg up, then you're gonna try harder, right? I'll give you a quick example. Back in the day in my social studies and my AP, I think it was AP World History, motherfucks. AP World History class, my teacher had this policy. Her policy was that you can borrow points essentially from your upcoming second semester grade to boost your first semester grade. So the idea is you don't wanna do this a lot, but it might help some people because the way it would work is like, you have your first semester grade, your second semester grade, and the exam, and those are averaged out and weighed differently, right? So you can manipulate it a little bit, right? So for example, if you get like a D first semester, you can sacrifice 20% of your grade and maybe pull it up to a B and get two Bs and a C on the final exam, and you get like a B in the class. Versus if you start with a D, there's no way out of getting a C, right? Now some people, like this one guy I knew, he was like, he got like a 70 on the first semester, right? So he borrowed 20 points. Now he knew that this policy was in effect. So first semester, he didn't give a shit. He's like, oh, I don't have to get an A. I can get a 70 and borrow 20 points. Get a B and then get an A on the final exam. And it actually worked for this motherfucker. He was smart. He was smart and he busted his ass second semester, right? First semester, he didn't care. And it's the same thing with women's wrestling. It's like, if people are gonna be guilted into liking you and supporting you, you don't have to get better, right? It's same thing, you see the same thing happening with women's soccer, women's NBA, with the WNBA, right? You see this like this entitlement of like, you need to come watch our games and we need to make more money. Oh, are you gonna get better and sell more tickets? No. Well, why should they, right? You think they just bully you into, into liking them. So there you have it, cuts. Reason number 17, because they want to prove that women quote unquote can do it, their femininity is totally stripped, right? There's some girls that are clearly feminine and clearly attractive, right? But their femininity is stripped because they have to play these ridiculous characters. I'll give you a great example. Dakota Kai. Not saying she's a 10 or anything, but Dakota Kai is an attractive girl. But what does she do instead? She plays this like fucking Wardlow role, but it's like a, it's like a bad Wardlow because she's a lackey, but she doesn't even like do anything, right? But she's always like a bad guy. She's always betraying somebody. 
shit like that. Sasha Banks. I don't think Sasha Banks is very attractive, but she's obviously not a pig, right? Sasha Banks, all she does is betray her partners. She's the female Carlito, right? And they take away her femininity, and instead, they put, like, the moniker of the boss on her, right? And then everyone's surprised why AW can only, can only get, like, 500,000 views. Oh, she's the CEO. She's going to draw. No, she's not. Reason number 18. As a consequence of reason 17, the women in women's wrestling no longer have any femininity. To the point where men have to emasculate themselves to find some femininity in these women. Great example would be like Rhea Ripley, like his mommy is always on top. And there's all these neckbeards who are like, oh, I'd like for Rhea Ripley to shit in my mouth while I smell her feet. You know what I mean? These bunch of like weirdos, like they're like not men even. They're just like a bunch of sexual deviants. And they're like, oh, this woman has no femininity to her whatsoever, so I'll take the role of the woman. And Rhea Ripley can peg me all night long, you know what I'm saying? That's basically the entire gimmick of Dominic, right? But it's funny because Dominic is a comedy character. Now, but just because he's a comedy character doesn't mean that the real neckbeards are. The real neckbeards want that shit. They're like, I want to smell her feet, like weird shit like that, you know? Reason number 19. There is no actual women's tag team division. Now... There's women's tag team titles, but there's no women's tag teams. The only one is the Kabuki Warriors. Everything else is just two women thrown together, right? They're like, oh, here's Alba Fire and the other one, right? And it's like, why are they friends? Explain to me. Oh, they're both from Scotland. Not good enough. Not good enough. What is their gimmick and why are they a tag team, right? If, if they're friends because they're both from Scotland, I want them coming out in kilts and with brave heart face paint. You know, have a gimmick, be a tag team, right? In the past, tag teams had a connection, right? So for example, Edge and Christian, they were supposed to be brothers and they were both like these fucking weird dark mother fucks, right? They were like vampires and shit. Then they became like surfer dudes. The Hardy Boys, they're actual brothers. Hell, the Usos in the men's tag team division. The Dudley Boys. Like, look how deep these gimmicks were. Even something as silly as Billy and Chuck, right? They were gay lovers. Great gimmick, if you ask me, cucks. But let's move on. Um, reason number 20. There are too many women's titles. We got the tag titles. We got the three world championships of Raw, SmackDown, and NXT. And now we've got that bullshit one, the North American one. And on top of this, we have Queen of the Ring, Women's Rumble, Women's Money in the Bank. Like, everybody gets a turn, if you ask me. But there's too many titles, first and foremost. So it really dilutes everything. And the titles are all meaningless. So, like, there's really no prestige in being the women's champion, or let's say the NXT champion, versus the NXT jobber champion. What's the difference? Who cares? You know? Who said the NXT title is more important? Whatever. It don't matter to me. I don't even know who the NXT women's champion is. I think it might be Roxanne Perez, but I'm not sure. And the other one, the one who won the jobber title, you can put a gun to my head, I won't know her name. Now, let's continue, cucks. Uh, reason number uh, 21. Every woman one-ups the previous one. You may have noticed this. So Bailey was like the longest reigning SmackDown champion. Then Rhea Ripley became the longest reigning Raw champion. Now they're both done and someone else is going to break some other record, right? Becky Lynch is the first woman to main event WrestleMania. Sasha Banks and Bailey are the first women to main event anything, right? They even go down to the referees. They're like, at Backlash, they're like, this referee is the only re female referee to ever like referee a WWE title match like who cares everyone's one-upping everyone right so that's not good uh reason number 22 there are too many foreign wrestlers that ruin matches case in point damage control they ruin matches and they ruin segments I don't want to hear EO Sky butcher the English language and say things like damage control needs to change just give her a mouthpiece man she's not there to talk you know what I mean She's there to be cute and do moves, you know? That's as simple as that. She ain't there to carry a promo. You didn't hire her for that. So keep that in mind, cuckolds. Reason number 24. Uh, no, sorry, reason number 23, cucks. Too many women that never get over. We have people like Dakota Kai in this company. But the worst culprit of all time, I mean, it might be Zelina Vega at this point because she just like, hangs out with like LWO. She's like on the same boat as like Joaquin Wilde and Raul Mendoza or Cruz del Toro. She's in the same boat as them. They're just there. But the worst one 
is Tegan Knox. Tegan Knox, motherfucks, has wrestled like three times on TV and she's been with the company like seven years. Think about that. Let that sink in. There are too many women that never got over and that never will get over. Reason 24. Basically, no woman in modern wrestling, aside from Lynch, from Becky Lynch, has ever gotten over organically. All right? Organically is the key word. Yeah, Bianca Belair is over, but she's over because they told you she's over. They had her win the Royal Rumble, and they put her in WrestleMania, and people cheered. Right? Nobody got over. Like, for example, the way Lita got over. Lita would come out with S.A. Rios, who was a jobber, and she would stand out because she was an attractive girl doing basically all of S.A. Rios' moves as a luchador or a luchadora. You know what I'm saying? Then we had Trish Stratus. I don't have to explain that. China got over organically. She wasn't supposed to be as over, right? But she got over organically. And quite frankly, even back in the day in WCW, Daphne got over. One of my personal favorites. You know what I'm saying? Go look at my video about the top 10 women, women wrestlers of all time. But anyways... Almost nobody since the women's revolution has gotten over organically. I don't care what you say. Rhea Ripley's not getting over unless they tell you she's over, motherfucks. Like, if they booked her into being a jobber, she would never be over. Like, versus, let's say, Daniel Bryan or Kofi Kingston. For better or for worse, the facts are the facts. Those dudes got over themselves. And finally, reason 25. The women's wrestling made its way to WrestleMania main events. And in my personal opinion, it provided the worst... WrestleMania main event of all time. One of the worst WrestleMania matches of all time, and dare I say, one of the worst women's matches of all time. It was garbage. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hater, there's a lot of bad women's matches. That's true. But this is one of the worst ones because of the hype that it got. We were supposed to believe this is the best match of all time that we're about to see, and it wasn't. So with that being said, cucks, take care of yourselves, and that's been 25 Reasons Why Women's Wrestling Sucks.